Hi, I'm Mike Ridley and welcome to Power Boat Television. This week on the show, we're setting out to explore by trailer boat one of Canada's most historic and beautiful rivers, the Ottawa River. We're going to launch here in Pembroke and spend a few days exploring the waterway between here and Mattawa, Ontario. We were set for an early start, but regardless of the hour, Jordan DeRoche from the city of Pembroke joined us at the marina to fill us in on the city. Pembroke Marina is actually located off the beautiful uh, shores of the Ottawa River and uh, here we have um, 100 slips that we feature within our uh, marina. We also are right beside one of Pembroke's finest uh, parks and that's our Pembroke waterfront. So if you're a boater and you're coming you can certainly take advantage of free live entertainment uh, which happens throughout um, the months of July and August. We have over uh, 20 different um, restaurants. We pretty much feature everything from an international eatery standpoint and um, you can certainly tour around. We have self-guided tours that you could take advantage of. After chatting with Jordan, my wife Lisa and Melissa Marquardt with the Ottawa Valley Tourism Association helped launch the Prince Craft for our day on the river. Prepared with both charts and the route plotted in my iPad, we would be covering approximately 35 nautical miles upriver. This section of the river is relatively wide with open stretches of water that are easily navigated. It looks and feels more like a lake than a river. Just above Pembroke, the small craft route allows you to pass Cushing Island on either side, aided by markers. Looking upriver, it was easy to spot one of the old lighthouses that once guided commercial traffic on the river. Now they are preserved for the enjoyment of recreational boaters. As we proceeded upriver towards Petawawa, we are entering one of the more challenging sections of the river, but also one of the prettier areas as well. Numerous islands and rock shoals inhabit these waters, but the route through is well marked. While fishermen enjoy the shoals and islands, local boaters are drawn to this area for the numerous beaches like Petawawa Beach. After passing Petawawa River, we caught sight of Jubilee Lodge Marina, our first stop. Earlier in the morning, I had interviewed Cindy Phillips about the area and the marina. So we're very fortunate in the town of Petawawa to be on uh, the Ottawa River and the Petawawa River. So we've got lots of beautiful boating opportunities. Our Jubilee Lodge Marina has slips for transient boaters as well as our seasonal boaters. There's also fuel services available right there and a restaurant right on site. Lots to see and do in the town of Petawawa if you want to pop, pop into a slip and stay a while and visit. After a quick visit, we are back on the water, this time bound for Deep River. Passing through the narrows before the light at short turn, I could really feel the powerful current of the Ottawa River. Across the river and upstream from Petawawa is a very popular boating destination, Fort William. For several miles, there are wonderful stretches of beach on both sides of the river. Quite a length of the shoreline is off limits as it is part of CFB Petawawa. A grand old lighthouse on Deep River Islet marks a wide sweeping turn in the river. A major highlight on the river is Oiso Rock. It is considered a sacred site by the First Nations. If you're patient, you may be able to see some of the pictographs across its face. Back on the river, running fast to make a prearranged rendezvous in Deep River, we quickly came upon the Chalk River Laboratory. Opened in 1944, the lab conducts research for peaceful uses of nuclear technology. This facility created the CANDU reactors and is a major supplier of medical isotopes. One glance at the depth meter while traveling this section of the river explains how it got its name. Off of Pembroke, the river's depth is 40 feet. Here it plunges to 100 feet. After a fast five and a half nautical mile run, we were pulling into Deep River Marina, ready for a break. As we pulled in for fuel, Jason McCauley was waiting for us. We are standing here today at the marina, uh, which is a great access point to our lovely beaches and river which surround our town. We have a, a lot of amenities here. At, at the uh, marina itself, we serve fuel and, and munchies and coffee and drinks uh, as well. We, uh, we have a, a gateway to our, our great community. Jason went on to explain the uniqueness of Deep River over a late lunch. It was built as a planned community for the employees of the Chalk River Nuclear Plant. That's why all of the services are found around Town Square 
and recreation facilities are all within walking distance. Having expressed our thanks, Lisa, Melissa and I departed the marina hoping to arrive at our final destination before the darkening skies caught up with us. Well, today we've had a pretty good run in the sunshine, but as luck would have it, you can hear it and see it, we're almost at the end of this section of the river and the rain's gonna bring a halt to filming for a little while. Eventually the rain did stop and we were able to finish the last leg of the day's trip in reasonable comfort. We've just arrived at the Swisha, the furthest point upriver from Pembroke that you can go by boat without having access to a trailer to get you around the dam. So later in the show, we're going to head for the next section of the river as we work our way towards Mattawa. From our launching point to Mattawa, the trip upriver covers 20 nautical miles, an easy distance for a round trip outing. While the morning started off cool, higher temperatures and sunny skies were forecast for the balance of the day. Our run on the river today would take us through some of the most remote but scenic sections of the upper Ottawa River. If you're looking to stop for a picnic or overnight on the water, you have to look closely at your charts and explore along the shore slowly to find one of the stream inlets or other little bays to tuck into. After traveling for several miles, we came across one of the few navigational aids on this part of the river. While most of the run is in deep waters, the rock islands and shoals at Bald Rock are clearly marked. This section of the river is narrower and the shorelines are steeper. While the land adjacent to the river has been extensively logged, it's not hard to imagine that this is the wilderness that was opened up by Samuel de Champlain 400 years ago. As the skies continued to clear, Melissa commented that it was turning into a fantastic day to be on the river and Lisa and I couldn't have agreed more. Before long, the railway bridge over the river announced that Mattawa was in sight. On the shore, the town began to appear well south of the marina. Markers directed us to the east side of the river to pass under the bridge. Although the marina was close at hand, we decided to run up river to the Otto Holden Dam. As you near the dam, you will pass an abandoned concrete ramp. It's where the trailer service used to move boats around the dam as part of the organized Lake Temiskaming Ottawa River Waterway. You can see directly behind us why we can't go any further on this stretch of the upper Ottawa River. This is the Holden Dam just above Mattawa, and there's a whole series of dams on the Ottawa River that you can boat in between and have to use a trailer around. So we're going to wrap it up here and head to Mattawa. As we pulled into the marina, Jeff McGurr was waiting for us to introduce us to the town of Mattawa. The Ottawa and Mattawa Rivers are a fantastic place to come explore with your powerboat. You've got 96 kilometers of unobstructed waterway on the Ottawa River here out of Mattawa. You can launch directly from the marina and it's just absolutely mesmerizing. We've had a great time exploring these two sections of the upper Ottawa River. If you ever have the opportunity to trail her over to the Ottawa River, it's well worth the trip to spend some time amongst some fantastic scenery.